Mr. Speaker, I rise today as a doctor, public health expert, someone who spent his time in Congress thinking about global health security and pandemic preparedness. Um, I rise today because of novel coronavirus. It's on everyone's mind, and we have to talk about it. We have to think about how we got here, what we know, and where we're going. First, let's think about how we got here. If you think about, um, in late 2019, we heard the first reports that there was a novel virus um, occurring in China. In early January, we saw China take unprecedented steps to act containment, locking down Wuhan and um, you know, large portions of, of their country. We had our first briefing about seven or eight weeks ago. At that briefing, I identified four areas that the administration really had to focus on. One, you need a command control structure. You have to identify one person who's not political, not partisan, but is a public health expert who has that ability to work across the interagency process. Number two, you had to do an emergency supplemental and get resources out to the hospitals, the public health experts, et cetera, to make sure those that are on the front line had what they needed. Number three, we had to get our scientists and experts, we've got the best in the world at the CDC, NIH, to the epicenter, to the hot zone in China. That was delayed not because we didn't want to get there, but the Chinese um, would not allow us direct access. And number four, we had to be transparent with the, the public. We had to let people know the facts as they were occurring. Well, fast forward, you know, six weeks ago, I held the first hearing um, in my subcommittee on Asia and the Pacific on what was going on. We focused on the first step, containment. You know, it was evident at that hearing with the public health experts that we had that you really couldn't contain this novel coronavirus now known as COVID-19. We knew based on the public health recommendations that we would likely be seeing um, community um, events and community spreading. Um, that was pretty evident. We lost time. You know, the, the fact that China tried to contain things gave us a little bit of time, but the fact that we didn't develop a test, we didn't put things in place, really set us behind the eight ball. Two weeks ago, we had the first community case in my home county, Sacramento County. That patient was transferred to UC Davis, which is my home facility, and based on that, we changed the testing criteria. We still don't have enough tests out there, but we changed the criteria to allow the healthcare professionals, if they suspect a case of coronavirus, they should be able to order that test. Now, we've got a problem, though. We don't have the tests that are available. We now are moving into the second phase of coronavirus, which is mitigation. And in order to do that, you know, Congress took the first important step last week of the $8.3 billion emergency supplemental. We've got to get the resources, the protective um, gear, the masks, and the tests out to the community who's on the front line. The reason why I'm saying that is yesterday we had the first community case um, in my home city of, of Elk Grove, the school district. We had a, a grammar school child who tested positive. Both his parents have also tested positive. Elk Grove Unified School District became the first school district to, in Northern California to shut down for a week. I don't know if that's the right move or the wrong move, but I understand having spoken to the superintendent, the security and health of the, the children are paramount. Now, we have to make sure that our folks on the front line, the folks that are having to make some of these decisions, have the best advice possible. That's why we've got to make sure the CDC puts out guidelines and updates those guidelines on a regular basis. We've got great personnel at the CDC, Director Redfield, Dr. Messonnier, and, and others. We've got to let them do their work, even if it's not what the administration wants to hear, even if it's bad news. It's important for us to put out transparent information and guidance to the public. Now, I also got on the phone and talked to, to my hospital directors and others. What's concerning to me is they are starting to get those calls, et cetera. They still don't have the testing capabilities that they need. That is of paramount urgency right now. I applaud you know, Vice President Pence for allowing the commercial sector to step in here and start developing those tests. Let's remove those bureaucratic barriers and allow our private sector, public health labs, academic health centers, um, the support that they need to get testing capabilities up and running. Now, I think about this as a doctor. 
It's important for us at the local level to have good command control structures in place, good lines of communication. Let's let the doctors and the scientists do their jobs. Our job as Congress is to support those on the front line, make sure they have the resources that they need, and we will get through this. Thank you, and I yield back.